Good evening, viewers, and welcome to today's Youth Atuko Show, The Journey. This is Health Week 2020, and we are so delighted about all the activity happening and all the health education that is going around in our parishes, in our congregations, on social media, in our church. We really thank God for this week. The theme for the Health Week 2020 has been or is restored to wholeness. What a powerful theme of restoration. And today in the journey, we're going to be focusing on restoration from substance use and addiction. And together with me in this show today, uh, to help understand this particular uh, perspective of restoration is Catherine, and I'm going to give her this opportunity to introduce herself. Hello viewers, my name is Catherine Womboy Karioki. I am born again. I am the center administrator, Presbyterian Care Center. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, for those of you who do not know what the Presbyterian Care Center is, it is the first rehabilitation center by the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. It is in Nakuru East Presbytery, Lanette Parish. It was commissioned in which year? 2017. In 2017 by the then our brother, uh, Secretary General, and in partnership with Nakada. Yes. Right? And the parish minister who was there at that time, Reverend George Mugambi, who continues to be very passionate about uh, these issues of uh, restoration from substance use and therefore uh, I welcome you to enjoy this journey with us today as we understand this particular restoration but before we engage uh, Catherine on this particular topic we're going to hear the story of Edward Ngugi. Edward Ngugi is 37 years old he is a born-again Christian he is married to Miriam and they have three children he was in Macedonia congregation in Baraka Parish and he has a wonderful story of how God has restored him to wholeness uh, from the disease of substance use and addiction. Listen to his story and we're going to be right back after that. My name is Edward Mukora Wanjiko. I'm a born again Christian. Nashiriki na Kanisa ya Macedonia, Baraka Parish. Na I'm employed in the Baraka Parish as a caretaker of the church. I share my journey of transformation from addiction to where the God have taken me to the recovery and now I'm transformed. Uh, uh, the way I started my, the way I entered into the addictions is through the friendship and the company that I had back in the my secondary school. Tukua na malafiki hivi during the play, Pama, through when we are going home, when I buy tuki tutu dogo to dogo, the alcohol, and I used to have a zip, one, two, three, until Mpaka Ikafika Mahari that I feel that I should buy for myself. So Nikaenda, Nikaenda Ivo, Nikaanza to buy for myself, and then Nikafika Mahari to Kakua, to Napika yetu na my fellow classmate back in our cubes, because back in our home we used to live in, our, in the cubicle houses after you get uh, circumcised. So, before we go to school, we used to have a zip. So, I could say, I can ingia. Until I could say, I'm addicted. I was addicted. I was addicted. I Cigarette, Mila, Kubelo, all those. Uh, the time I realized that I'm, I'm in a problem is a Mahali Lifika that I cannot stay without being drunkard. I can't stay without having that cigarette. I can't stay without having that, taking those mirrors and those cubelos. So I came to realize, Niko Nashida, singeweza kuka bila kuchuku tumia hizo vitu. Ikafika mahali, minamaliza shule, I'm married, I cannot save a coin. Every time nikiwa na shilingi, I'm feeling to go to, the, to search for my companies and you have to, to go to take the alcohol. So, ikafika mahali sasa, I'm getting nimeoa. I have my first child. I cannot sing a familia because of alcohol. Sing a weka could save anything until ikafika mahali the family break. Family ika break, nikakuwa, nikotena peke yangu. Nafanya mambo mingi, trying, nika naokoka, naaguka, naokoka, naaguka. Nikaona ya kwamba 
ni kwa na shida. Tukiwa kwa tukiwa huko katika this drinking spree with my company with my company they used to tell me about a group in Macedonia Baraka Parish that support those people who are in addictions you go there you are being given uh, sessions so i used to refuse because i feel that ah i'm useless i don't have i don't have i don't have to change everyone hates me my family hates me my family is gone my my family have break so i feel that i could not go there lakini nikafika mahali nikaona no i have to go there nikaenda mara kadhaa one two three times naenda narudi kukunywa naenda narudi kukunywa ikafika mahali sasa nikaona i need a change nikaokoka in the in the baraka parish kukiwa na there was a crusade it was that first of 2018 so nikaokoka huko tulikuwa tunapewa sessions za kuongeleshwa na kuonyeshwa the bad side of the addictions ga changa moto ambazo unakutana nazo ukiwa njia ya kubadilika ni kwamba the friends that you used to have wote wanakulenga and some of the family members unakuta wale mlikuwa mnakunywa na wao hata ukienda huko home hawakushabiki so unakuta you don't have company kama sasa nikifunga kazi yangu the only place i can go ni nyumbani because the family that I, the, the companies that i have ukienda pale they feel that you are not one of them so hiyo kitu ya kuwa you don't have friends is one of the challenges that i face the other thing that i experience because of those addictions ni kwamba no one could trust me hata ukipiga simu when you have a problem even a serious problem they just think oh ni ile tu pesa yake ya kukunywa they could just watch you wa wanaangalia tu simu ah ningoge hiyo ni pesa ya kukunywa huyu anatafuta even when you have a problem when you are sick my family could not take me serious because they were used to my behaviors the other thing is that i have lost a lot of jobs and very good some of uh, some of the them are very good jobs because if I'm, if i even take alcohol the following day I could not go to the to the working place i'm given first second warning and to the third warning i lose a number of jobs i thank god because he have helped me to overcome it ndio nakaa peke yangu na nimepata marafiki wengine kanisani so wakati sina marafiki i do have those the friends in the church the badrika dream uh, badrika group iko katika congregation ya Macedonia Baraka Parish ilianzishwa na mchungaji Reverend George Mugambi he is very passionate about our change our transformation na ametupeleka mbali kupitia kile kikundi tuko watu kama we started it about 80 people and total of them have transformed totally totally transformation hata ukiwawekea pale those those substances they cannot take so ile kikundi tume register with the ministry of social services tuko na to be in the process of getting hit in, uh, hnf tuko na membership card na tuko na project ambazo we have gone phase 1 pumpkins plantation we were given a farm by one of our mothers in the gaimurunya wa gaimurunya congregation mama tony thank you very much and uh, we are in the phase two of the battery cutting project the, the thing that is making uh, the, the thing that is bringing a bit of the problem ni financial finance ndio inatuletea shida kidogo because the church cannot be able to support us completely there is a lot of needs that we need but the group is still continuing tumesimama kidogo because of this covid but sasa tunaona Mungu ametenda inaenda kuisha and we shall resume in our with our meetings so anybody there would like to join us in ogata rugai area you are very welcome what i can tell my fellow youth ni kwamba this thing we started like a joke kama mchezo mchezo tu kama kafura hafula hatu but once you enter to it inakuwa ngumu sana kuiacha the only thing ambayo inaweza kukusaidia ni kuingia na kuingia uhusiano na Yesu Kristo. You make a decision of making Jesus Christ as your personal savior. 
Because God has given us choice between life and death. You choose for yourself. And the best rehabilitation lies inside you. You have the potential to change. Even if you go to the other rehabilitation, first you have to have make decision in yourself. The other thing I would like to, to tell my fellow youth is that uh, these things spoil your life. Because most who are, who are youth, to in this addiction, when we are energetic, wakati family inakuhitaji, wakati mungu inakuhitaji, wakati ya nation inakuhitaji kwa nanguvu. That is where we waste most of our times in those addictions. I would urge you, don't blame yourself, don't blame some, blame their talent. Hey, mzazi wangu angefanya, angefanya, ningeacha. Life is yours. And the time you wasted, you will never be recovered. The other thing I would say is that, uh, Oba Mungu, take a step. Accept Jesus. He is our helper. And you shall conquer. And you are able. Uh, my family, the, the way my family deal with addiction, uh, they try to talk to me. Ikafika mahali, wakashindwa. Nikienda kwa huyu, nimefanya kivituko, nimeenda na thao, just to take alcohol. Nikienda kwa huyu, namdanganya. So, ikafika mahali, wakarusha mikono. Ama wakachana na mimi. So, they were waiting for me. Either niache, ama wakute nime kufia huko kwa pombe. Ama nime gogo wa nagari. Because, wadijaribu kuniongeresha, si wa wakuweza. My grandmother, ambaya menilea, alikufa akilia because of my alcoholic. Kwa sababu ya hizo mambo ya ulevi. So, wale walikuwa wamejaribu. Until the Jesus came and he saved me. Because Jesus cannot get tired of you. Uh, my wife, I thank, first of all, I thank my wife so much, Miriam Wanjiro Mungai. Uh, because hiyo wakati ambao nilikuwa katika that state ya ulevi. Unakuta wakati mwingine mpaka nime kujua kwa kitanda. Nikiwa na devu hivi tu. Nakuta nime kujua kwa kitanda. Na kijaribu kuniuliza na zusha huko ije na mambia, go and tell everybody there, what will you do to me, I'm the man, do whatever you want. I try to defend myself with the violence. I thank her very much kwa sababu alinivumilia mpaka wakati mungu alikuja, akanibadilisha. So na mshukuru sana, by that time ni kona first born, anakodua kwa kitanda, second born anakodua kwa kitanda, na nini baba yao. Na kujua kwa kitanda. This thing is shameful. So I would urge my fellow youth, quit. It's not late. You can make it. Uh, Kanisa, the words that I, I can use are not enough to express my gratitude, especially to, to Kanisa. Especially the congregation in Macedonia, starting with our Reverend George Mugambi. He have been very supportive to me. Ata kunuita kwa ofisi yake, tunaongea one, one on one. Mukikutana na ya na kusalimia na kuhal. Ine kuhalua, you see, you, you feel you are valuable. Mtu gaja ni hang, you feel valuable. Kanisa ime ni support in one way. I'm working there. Wame ni ajili. Wame ni support ki familia. Wame kuwa muongozo in katika the word of God, in prayers, kunishikilia. Kunionisha my value, they have really been supportive to me and I thank the Macedonia congregation so much in Baraka Parish and also I thank Baraka Parish kwa sababu wamekua wame kitushikiria katika kile kikundi. We do get refreshment and uh, lunch wherever, every time we meet, I thank the Baraka Parish in whole. Thank you very much. The charges za kukuta ni kama unasikia kurudi nyuma ama to backslide it have once met me bado nikifanya huko kanisani na nikalipwa mshahara na nikaenda nikakunywa nikiwa tu huko kanisani but when the other day nilikunywa jana the other day when i was sober nikasikia nimekosea sana nikaanza kulia nikiwa kwa nyumba nikaomba Mungu nikamwambia hiyo jambo sitaki kujikuta hapo tena Nikaomba deep in my heart because when we pray lazima Mungu angalia are you meaning deep in your heart is that thing you want from deep in your heart or just saying because you are tired you need so nikaomba Mungu akanisaidia nika nika nikakuta nikakuta nimetoka katika that first temptation 
so tume fero yuvu ambao wanajaribu kuacha unakuta ume umerudi pale make a firm decision because hata mimi nilijaribu kama mara sita inafika mahali nanunua hiyo pombe na imwaga thinking that will help me to live it na nunua masigara na zivunja vunja thinking hiyo itanisaidia but decision is lies inside you to make a firm decision ya kwamba i will not and first you get tired of that life uchoke na hiyo maisha cuz mimi nilikuwa imenichosha nakaa kwa nyumba niko mlevi naanza kudia na where am i heading to nilielewa nikuwe shabiki wa ulevi nilielewa nikae maisha i got tired of that life so even you have first to get tired of that life wewe mwenyewe before anybody before any counselor you get tired and that will help you when you make a decision you make a firm decision to change and to help you by it will help you you yourself the thing uh, ambayo imenisaidia kuendelea katika hii maisha first is being prayerful kuomba mara mingi i do pray in the morning napiga magoti as a signs of humbleness to god ukiwa kanisani ama whenever you are working kuwa ukiomba mara mingi mingi because anything you seek the god says knock and it shall be open if you knock i need i need to change i need to change God open that door of change into your life. So it have helped me being playful, leading the word. Kwa simu saa hii ya very we are very okay you don't have to carry the bible you have the word. Hata ukiwa uko kazini just read one word. It will get it succeed that you are planting in your soul and to germinate and to be a big tree of restoration and transformation in your life. Uh, in the side of the youth what I can say they are really informed because even that packet of cigarette is right and don't no smoking itself leave alone kuambiwa na mtu itself that uh, that bottle of alcohol it's, it's written there downward the apotini over consumption and the its, its disadvantages and the diseases of cirrhosis liver diseases so youth they are informed what we do maybe if i can say i'm sorry is ignorance even when i knew what i'm doing is not good this I'm taking is not good. Ah, and me ni cotton dogo, I'll change after 2 years. A time iko, time iko. Ignorance have make the youth change. They have the, they have the, they are informed all the consequences, the disadvantages are a death. Mimi nimezika a lot of vijana tulikuwa tunakunywa na wao. Mzazi amekulea, hujaacha familia, you are like a child ambaye alikufa within one day within one day so see vizuri mzazi afanye kazi ya bure you are informed you have information starting from those things that you are buying they are all eaten from the media from more from more the corners of the world so i would urge you youth to stop this thing because it is wasting your time it is wasting your energy it is wasting your resources uh, to be restored from uh, to be restored to the wholeness is like taking a shower after a long day job the way you feel relieved you feel good i was waking up uh, morning tired now i can wake up refreshed i don't need an alarm i have no hangovers so when you are transformed it start helping you by you specifically you yourself mzazi anakuongelesha but faida ni kwako so me being transformed i feel good I nakutanga kwa habit ni kwa nadhau it have two weeks sijaitumia last time i could not spare i could sing a car na na 200 so transformation inanisaidia sasa ina nimeanga kiatu nilikuwa every time ni pay ni pay trouza ni pay under money so transformation inakusaidia wewe mwenyewe so my fellow youth make a change take a step and it will help you don't waste your time your god needs you when you are young your nation needs you when you are young your life needs you when you're energetic you can save your future will depend with how you spent your your youth with covid-19 pandemic there are emerging issues relationships family issues emotional challenges like anxiety and depression lack of basic necessities 
like food, house rent and such, this is the reality on the ground. And therefore, even with the eventual reopening of the economy, it's not going to be a grand comeback, but rather we need to be ready for a gradual process of recovery. Consequently, the need for sustained mission to the needy remains. So far, we have been able to reach to 32,000 families through the Adopt a Family initiative. We appreciate everyone who has contributed to this effort through the PayBill number and through the local churches across the country in relieving the suffering of thousands. God giving us another day, we appeal to you to continue partnering with PCA Mission Department by expressing our extraordinary kindness. For kindness goes with hospitality, and hospitality has a great reward. And therefore, it is amazing how you continue to support us in this mission of love and kindness. And I urge and humbly ask all of you to continue contributing in kind through our churches and also through our pay bill number 6895 the account name you still put your name. Let us continue demonstrating our unusual kindness at these unusual times. God bless you all. As a seed. A marriage is instituted. You now embark on the work of watering it, cultivating it, creating legacies from one generation to the other. That is what growing families takes. And for powerful discussions on family as we answer questions, demystify myths, and touch on those controversial topics, tune in to CAC TV as we talk, talk, and talk a whole lot more about family. As we grow my family, grow your family, and grow our families. Because a stable family is a stable society. Join me, Faith Kaulu, together with Reverend Edward Karanja and Professor Catherine Gashuda on Transforming Families right here at CAC. TV. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back. That was the story of Edward. And I'm sure so many out there are as amazed as I am. What, what is your first response? What is your first feeling mm -hmm. when you listen to the story of Edward? Uh, the story of Edward uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a good story that yes. brings now the picture of a transformed person yes. and a complete person yes. that has tested the, 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 the disease of addiction. Mm in a very severe way, if I may say, yes. because he's pointing out even the, the effects yes. of his alcoholism, mm. the, the, the losses that he encountered when yes. in active addiction, yes. and now the, 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 the finishing part, yes. which is very nice, that yes. I'm now restored, I'm yes. now a whole person, yes. and walking in the journey of recovery. Amen. It's so profound. You know, for me, the thing that uh, you know, stands out most is, mm -hmm the power of the grace of god yes and the power of the gospel mm -hmm. you yes. know is to help somebody be transformed and yes. restored to wholeness yes like he has so powerfully you know said i think about three times yes jesus yes jesus yes a and of course the issue of uh, personal commitment yes and personal decision mm -hmm. so this is this is the journey mm -hmm. on uh, by youth to call this is health week 2020 yes. where the theme is restored to wholeness mm -hmm. now uh, when you're talking about restores to wholeness, mm -hmm. it means that uh, something was broken yes. and it needs to be restored to functionality. Yes. And in this case, mm -hmm. or in this program today, mm -hmm. we are looking at restoration 
for a life mm -hmm. that has been broken by substance use and addiction. Yes. What is substance use and addiction? Substance use and addiction, uh, I'll call it a disease. Mm -hmm. If you go to the extremes of understanding what addiction is, yes. you put it in the category of a disease. A disease? A disease. Okay. In that, uh, using the DSM-5, Yes. The diagnostic uh, statistical manual. Yes. There is this uh, the criteria that is used okay. to specify addiction as a disease. Okay. And that is why you find it has symptoms. Yes. And it has now the 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 the, the, the effects. Yes. That are aligned to the said condition. Uh -huh. So every uh, sickness has symptoms. Yes. And this uh, addi uh, the disease of addiction yes. it has also its own symptoms. Okay. And that is why like the story of uh, the, the guy who has just uh, shared his story. Yes. He will tell you that there are things that he found himself doing yes. which were beyond his control. Yes. Like now a whole man uh, urinating on bed. Yes. This is a condition that it's beyond his control. Okay. And now in the addiction we say that uh, the, the, the symptoms that we look unto them, yes. this person coming to you and tell, telling you that I've been abusing this and this mm. could be uh, drinking of alcohol, uh, smoking of cigarette. Yes. The use of hard, uh, hard stuff, the hard drugs. Yes. And the symptoms are there that point out mm -hmm. that this person is suffering from an addiction of okay. his drug of choice. Okay. And you are able to tell that if it is addiction, this yes. person, the withdrawal symptoms, yes. if I don't use my drug of choice, yes. what are the effects? Yes. And that's why you find people that in the morning he cannot function, yes. not until he takes... Mm -hmm. the substance or his drug yes. of choice yes. and now the body is rejuvenated again yes. and he now becomes or he starts to function again wow. so the dependence issue is there yes. that i'm so dependent on this substance yes. that i cannot function without it okay. so that is why it becomes a disease yes. and something needs to be done for this person to come out of it oh my yes. I, I think that is a very powerful thing because uh, substance use is mostly looked upon by society at large mm -hmm. as a behavioral yeah. you know, problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking from uh, what Edward has shared mm -hmm. and the experiences of so many other people that we have experienced even in our own families, our own close circle of friends, mm -hmm. you know, the, the people who are in substance use and addiction usually get dismissed like what are you like it you know mm -hmm. how, you know how, how would you uh, help in to, to our viewer mm -hmm. to shift from a mentality of that uh, uh, substance use and addiction is a moral problem mm -hmm. and it is a disease like any other and yes. that somebody needs help because th there needs to be very few people understand that uh, substance use and addiction is a disease mm -hmm. yeah yeah to make our viewers understand the ish the whole concept of addiction yes is that uh this person has developed the dependence of the substance mm. and it being a disease yes. you find that it's a disease that has to be managed just the way yes. we manage diabetes and high blood pressure mm -hmm. In a family setup, when you have our uh, close uh, members of the family, yes. and this person is suffering from diabetes, yes. there are these extreme care that we take for this person. Yes. When it comes to diet, when it comes to how we relate with them, we don't want to stigmatize them and show them that no, this is uh, your condition. Yes. Same case to addiction. Mm -hmm. The issue of stigma is there. Yes. We have termed it as a moral failure. Yeah. That this person is just drinks because he wants to drink. Mm -hmm. This person uh, wants to drink because he has become exploitative in the family. Yeah. He wants to the quick gains from the family members. Yes. He wants to exploit the families. He doesn't want to work. Yes. But I would wish that the larger society would understand yes. that addiction is a disease like diabetes yes. or any other chronic illness. Wow. And in fact, it's in the category of the chronic uh, of the chronic illnesses My. that are there because finding a person becoming helpless yes that this thing and they the, the funny thing is that addiction does not discriminate yes whether you are learned whether you're not learned mm -hmm. whether you are a professor it's there for every person yes and it comes to anyone yes so the larger society must understand 
yes. that these people that are battling the battle of addiction, mm. they need the care that we give even to the other to the other people. Yes. You find these people sleeping, uh, sleeping on the roads. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are not even realizing where they are. Yes. Because already the damage is there. Yes. The brain is already damaged. Yes. The body has developed the tolerance. He cannot function without it. Yes. And that's why when they come to us, we now start now the process of cleaning the body, yes. restoring this person to wholeness again. Yes. And one of the process is now the pharmacology uh, setup. Yes. Where in a rehab that uh, we want to treat the withdrawals, yes. we want to treat uh, uh, maybe an induced psychosis that has come along. Yes. Those are difficult times, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that has come along as mm. a result of this person abusing yes. a substance. Like now the cases of abuse of marijuana. Yes. There is a tendency of an induced uh, drug psychosis. Mm -hmm. And this person, you handle them with care because mm -hmm. it's from addiction now yes. to mental illness. And this mental illness okay, okay, has okay. to be... I, I think we, we are going to look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, addiction, and then it, it, trans it, 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 it makes a transition yes. into mm -hmm. mental illness. Mm -hmm. We are going to look at that in a moment. Yeah. Uh, but first, mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, go back to the basics a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, like his drug of choice was... Oh, let, let's call it his drug of choice. Well, mm -hmm. I wish we didn't have to call it that way. Yeah. But the substance that uh, Edward was abusing mm -hmm. uh, mainly was alcohol. Yes. And of course, in the process, it introduced a bit of others like uh, cigarette smoking mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, probably a few others. Yes. Uh, but what are some of the other m most common substances mm -hmm. uh, that are being abused in our modern society especially like when you look at the kenyan setup mm -hmm. yeah i think some of the drugs that are coming up initially yes. we knew of alcohol uh it came along we now have the prescribed pills yes that are being abused mostly by the uh, high schoolers yes this uh, these kids when they go to high school they want to yes. the curiosity in them yes. they want to try everything mm. there is kinakuber there is mogoka mm. there is mira yes. there is kuber mm -hmm. and all these things are coming up okay and uh, the issue of the now the prescribed pills mm -hmm. because there's a notion that if you take diazepam and you study the whole night yes and you you'll be able to uh to, to tackle wow. the exams when you're fresh yes but uh at the end of it we look at the end results mm. what are the effects of these things mm. so these are the dr drugs that are coming in and at the moment that now the uh, children are at home, they're not going to school. Yes. Marijuana is on, abuse is on high rise. Okay. High rise because you find marijuana sold in, uh, yes. in the streets. And marijuana is bangi. Marijuana is bangi. We call yeah. it like bangi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. More commonly. Yes. Insani, na julikana kama dong. You know. Yes. yes. You, you, there are a lot of street terms. names. Yeah, yes. the yes. street names. Mm -hmm. So marijuana is... On, on the rise, the abuse of marijuana. Yes. And uh, it's come, it's coming up in different forms. Okay. It's made in cookies. Yes. Find your your child uh, taking a cookie and you don't know what. Like a biscuit. Like a biscuit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have been shown our in form of sweets, the lollipops. Yes. But the the substance in it, there is marijuana in it. Yes. So you're not able to tell because these things have come okay. they're, they're coming up in a mm -hmm. more functionalized way okay that ah. the, the parents will not be able to okay. tell mm -hmm. we have the e-cigarettes yes. just a pen yes so you find your kid with a pen and you don't know it's just a pen just a pen just a oh pen my. yes but this person is abusing some something mm -hmm. yeah so in talking about restoration to wholeness you're actually looking at a whole spectrum of uh, very many uh, substances that yes. young people could be abusing mm -hmm. because we're especially talking about young people but uh, as uh, Catherine indicates that this is a problem that is common to everyone regardless of our social status or mm -hmm. any other uh, you know thing that can matter in a, in a person's life yes. and uh, you know highlighting some of these uh, very common drugs mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that they are packaged in a very cool way yes a very cool way mm -hmm. that is both uh, enticing mm -hmm. to a young person yes because i mean who minds a cookie no uh, you know especially mm -hmm. when you're in a youth gathering mm -hmm. or probably you want to go to biking or sports and mm -hmm. somebody brings a packet of biscuits i mean yes. youth likes to share mm -hmm. Young people like bashes, mm -hmm. they like parties, yes. they like to just meet up and have a good time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the other element of that is the deception. Yes. Because now like when you talk about the e-cigarette, mm -hmm. uh, that it looks like a pen. Yes. And mm -hmm. you know, probably the person 
right next to you, mm -hmm. either in a public place or even at home, mm -hmm. is using it, yeah. and you have no idea. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so those are some of the common uh, drugs that are used. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that he came in to it, uh, Edward, mm -hmm. in because of uh, peer pressure, yes. because of the friends that he was hanging out with. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other um, pathways mm -hmm. which bring people into this disease mm -hmm. of uh, substance use and addiction? Well, there are many pathways yes. that leads to addiction. Uh, from peer pressure, we go to curiosity. Mm -hmm. A person who is joining high school for the first time mm -hmm. and wants to fit in a certain company. Yeah. And there the other friends are taking a uh, bangi. Yes. So he just definitely uh, want to know this person is happy. Yes. This person the he he is a metangam water. So I want also to try yes. and see uh -huh. what really happens. Yes. So out of curiosity, yeah. this person starts now to abuse. Okay. Without knowing that uh, it will lead to addiction, mm. but the curiosity leads this person to just try and mm. start mm -hmm. and have the, a, a, a first hand uh, feeling. Yes. How does this, this thing feel? Okay. So, from curiosity, we can say uh, the other things about the stresses of life. Yes. This person is stressed. Yes. And maybe a way out. Mm. When I take a bottle of alcohol, Mm -hmm. My stresses are gone. Yes. Without realizing that it just be a temporal fun. Mm -hmm. I just forget my problems for a duration of um, a few hours. Yes. And then from there I'm sober again. Mm -hmm. But the problem is still staring at you. Yes. So you not have solved the problem mm -hmm. and here you are. Yes. The problem is still escalating. Yeah. So this person will just go back yes. to drinking the mm -hmm. alcohol mm -hmm. to normalize the feelings. Yes. But in the real sense, mm -hmm. he'll have solved nothing. Okay. So the trend goes on and goes on. Yeah. And in eventually this person is an addict. Mm -hmm. What started as an escape mm -hmm. a thing. I want yeah. to escape from my stresses of life. Yeah. It now becomes a habit that you have to keep up with. Yes. It. Or yes. a behavior mm. that now it becomes a big behavior that we need a professional help yeah. for you to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And of course, one of the things that Ward said is, uh, you know, him, he started it out of uh, curiosity and yes. depression. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, I was so shocked, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to hear that even they, they began brewing. Yes. Uh, you know, their own concussions mm -hmm. of whatever and, uh, you know, just chop something before going to... Uh, to work, eh? mm -hmm. uh, I mean to school, sorry. Yes. And uh, you know, that was happening when he was a student. Mm -hmm. So what can you say to parents? Mm -hmm. How can parents, uh, you know, if we can say, mm -hmm. to be able to sense and to discern mm -hmm. that certain things are happening in my son, in my daughter, mm -hmm because it is a reality that some of these things are happening right in our homes, yes. in schools. Mm -hmm. What can you say to parents? Mm -hmm. I'll tell parents that uh, in the family setup, yes. obviously a change of behavior yes. will be noticed. Yes. If this guy has been coming home earlier mm -hmm. and now he starts coming late in the night, yes. ask yourself, what is this that has changed drastically? Mm -hmm. yes. If this person has been used to waking up early mm -hmm. and doing stuff in the house without being told, do this, do that, yes. and then all of a sudden he's a, he has become now a sleeping, but you know, he just want to sleep, yes. ask yourself, what, is, mm -hmm. what has changed? Yes. And now there, there are also the signals that they send, yes. which to us parents, at times we tend to ignore, mm -hmm. or we tend to just overlook yes. what is happening. Yes. Today, if my son comes home uh, with the hair is shaved, at an angle and then there's this rolling uh -huh. the, the hair is turning locks, yeah, yeah the locks yes i'm bound to ask myself what has really changed yes what is happening yes so a guy smelling of uh chewing a gum in the morning mm -hmm. it sits in the morning as he's chewing something pr 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 uh, maybe a, a chewing gum mm -hmm. you also say what is happening uh -huh. it is too early could be this person has just smoked and okay. he wants to take okay. the smell away. Yeah, cover up, yes. A cover up. So yes. this person is chewing in the morning. Ask yourself what is happening. Okay. So there are many points that us as parents, uh -huh. at times we tend to ignore or we just, okay. maybe we just tend to overlook, mm -hmm. but signals are there. Okay. Messages are being sent. Yes. But out of ignorance, yes. we are not able to tell what is happening. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think that is very powerful, and especially as you look at this topic of uh, restored to wholeness, mm -hmm. that uh, there are many 
stakeholders yes. in the journey of recovery mm -hmm. and restoration to wholeness mm -hmm. for people who are especially going through substance abuse yeah. and for starters that, you know if for, we could talk about young people mm -hmm. who are still living with their parents mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, what Catherine is saying is so powerful because parents are constantly with your children mm -hmm. or at least guardians are watching over their children mm -hmm. and it's very easy yes. to pick some of these things if you are deliberate about it mm -hmm. and then we usually say that prevention is better than cure exactly you know before we come to the place of uh, rehabilitation mm -hmm. and uh, uh, conflict with the law and yeah. police and all that mm -hmm. or somebody can be helped yes now we need to uh, go further and uh, look at how does a um, journey of restoration to wholeness mm -hmm. recovery from substance use and addiction mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, some of the knowledge that you have picked along the way, mm -hmm. uh, or, or even according to what uh, Edward has shared, mm -hmm. is that it's usually never an easy process, yes. and it might require something quite momentous mm -hmm. to even make somebody offer themselves or give themselves into a recovery program, into mm -hmm. a recovery process. Yes. What is recovery mm -hmm. and restoration in as far as substance use? Uh, and addiction is concerned. Okay. Yes. When we talk about the recovery or now the issue of change. Yes. Somebody is in active addiction and mm -hmm. now he feels that now mm -hmm. I want to change. Yes. Because um, it's from habits and behaviors. Yes. And it's a process. Yes. Like you said, it's from curiosity, from peer pressure, mm -hmm. that process yeah. going along until yes. a point of now we call it the rock bottom yes where yes. by your needs to surrender and you say now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done with this yes and also again the process of the the change that needs to be done is also a process mm -hmm. and in the process of change yes the number one thing is acceptance yes acceptance that there is a need and a weakness and inability to change mm -hmm. and doing it on my own i cannot make it yes so i just need to uh uh, to come out of my state of hopelessness yes and maybe seek change yes and that one stage is acceptance that mm -hmm. I have a problem mm -hmm. okay identify the problem and yes. accept that uh -huh. this, this thing yes. is beyond my control okay the other thing is about and of course even before you got there like uh, Edward said mm -hmm. that he had a lot of defense yes uh, you know mm -hmm. that defense mechanism like mm -hmm. uh, every time that problem is pointed out he yes. he'd go over the wire mm -hmm. and say <laughs> yeah. you know and all mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, so how does someone overcome that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and and actually not be able to give themselves well the, the, the first thing like I've said is acceptance okay okay acceptance that I have a problem because mm -hmm. these people are with this problem like All Edward right. I just said yes they have developed this defense mechanism yeah that any time that I'm in the wrong I'll come up with something to mm -hmm. secure me yeah. or to take me of it and mm -hmm. I'll not be taken ac uh, accountable of whatever has happened. Okay. So this person is looking for ways to defend himself. All right, all so right. as you accept, yeah. you also so now acceptance is the first, acceptance is the first okay. thing. Okay. The other thing is self-realization. Mm -hmm. You realize yourself. This is a weakness in me. Yeah. This is uh, an opportunity destroyer that is yeah. coming up. Mm -hmm. How do I deal with it? Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, as you realize it's like coming to your senses coming back to your senses yes. and realizing that this is a, a, a thing that i tried out of curiosity and peer pressure and i need now to come out of it mm -hmm. so you, you after acceptance is self, self realization okay that i also have regardless of the weaknesses yes. i also have the strength mm -hmm. the strength mm -hmm. in me that can make me yes. come out of this thing uh -huh. and like edward has said yes we say that the journey of recovery is a personal commitment mm -hmm. at times they go through the process but until you commit yourself to come out of it yes it's also a longer pro uh, program or yeah. a process mm. that at times it's it repeats itself okay so you find yourself you've gotten help but along the way yeah. you sleep again mm -hmm. so you come back now seeking for another help uh -huh. and that is why we even tell parents yes that uh, rehabilitation might fail for the first time yes but for the second time it, it will work okay it will work okay. and this being okay. a journey yes in fact somebody was abused uh, alcohol for 10 years yes and going for rehab for three months the yes. 90 days yes it takes time for this person to come out wow so we say that like we said from the beginning mm. it's a chronic illness understand yeah. this person mm. because even diabetes has relapses along the way yes yeah at times the, the sugars are very high at times mm. they are normal mm. same case to addiction okay. at times you're working out of it okay so the other thing is uh, uh we can talk about uh uh now the the issue of um 
change the yes. action now taking yes. the action mm -hmm. and then taking the action as you seek for change yeah. this is where you now seek the professional help yeah. Edward has just mentioned that he, he didn't go for any rehabilitation it was from within mm -hmm. but now a majority of people will look for uh, help uh, professionally mm -hmm. like now coming to a rehab yes. whereby these people will be able to be helped mm -hmm. as we take out now the substances from the body through the pharmacology issue yeah. and the psychiatric uh, issues mm -hmm. now this person gets help mm -hmm. so the issue of taking out the action I identify my weakness mm -hmm. I accept have this problem yes. I now take the action of seeking help okay. professionally okay. and then from there as you go through the process mm -hmm. there is now the maintenance stage mm -hmm. which is now the final stage what you are yes. talking what edward is now in the yes. recovery journey yes which to me it's a lifetime journey mm. you work for life because many people with mm. substance use disorder yes. these people have come to value time yes living a day at a time mm. because waking up in the wow. morning and re uh, remaining sober wow it's by god's grace that's an achievement yeah, it's, a, it's a big achievement wow and that's why in the rehab setup we have the 12 steps yes and step number two says that we came to realize that a higher power greater than us yes would restore us back to sanity yes so the whole thing of being restored to wholeness mm. a higher power has to be involved wow a higher power has to come in okay so it's a big struggle yes but again Yes. we have a higher power that yes. we can relate to okay yes so we're talking about the first stage being acceptance yes. that i have a problem I like have a problem. edward was saying was he began to realize these are going haywire yes yeah when uh, you know he could see some of the things that he was doing that mm -hmm. he it was impossible almost yes. for him to believe this is me mm -hmm. and then you're talking about um self-realization yes where somebody realizes although i have a problem mm -hmm. I, I still have resources yes. uh, either within and around mm -hmm. me that can help me to overcome yes and uh, the third one is now the, the action, the, the action. Mm -hmm. or like for him was very uh, privileged uh, let yes. me say so yes to have a church group mm -hmm. uh, run by you know a church uh, yes. one of our PCA churches mm -hmm. and he was able to plug in there mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure around uh, anybody who is seeking this restoration to wholeness, mm. uh, church is usually a very, very, very good place uh, where to begin. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one you said is the maintenance. The maintenance. You know, and and t talking about all that, mm -hmm. uh, y you work in uh, the, the only Presbyterian uh rehabilitation center yes. the presbyterian care center that mm -hmm. uh, we we talked about in the beginning in akuru east uh, lanet parish mm -hmm. uh, how does this process usually unfold mm -hmm. from the time that somebody comes to you mm -hmm. with uh with, with a problem yes until you discharge them with uh let me call it a certification of yes you know soberness or something mm -hmm. i don't know how that goes yeah. how does that process look like okay yeah so when a client we call them clients yes. when a client come yeah the first thing is assessment and screening mm -hmm. and in assessment we say that rehabilitation is an, an integration of programs mm -hmm. You find counselors, you find a uh, psychiatrist on board, mm -hmm. chaplains, chaplains on board, yes. and we also have a, a church in the same compound. Yes. So it's an integration program, mm -hmm. a whole setup. Mm -hmm. So when a client comes in for the first time, yes. we now do the, the as we do the intake, we mm -hmm. do the screening. Okay. The screening is done uh, 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 in a form of a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a tool in a questionnaire yeah so one of the questions maybe we ask is that uh mm -hmm. in the last three months how many bottles of alcohol have you been taking or the drug of choice yes. how many times have you been taking yeah. so at the end of the questionnaire there's now the score mm -hmm. the score might okay, be severe okay. or moderate okay so the, the severity will now determine uh -huh. whether we are keeping this person in yes. the rehab yes or whether we are doing just counseling mm -hmm. and releasing the person because it may not be severe but moderate okay and this person can be able to mm -hmm overcome okay uh, through the the, the the behavior change okay now from screening there's mm. now the assessment okay assessment is done by the psychiatrist okay. because we want to, uh, to identify is mm -hmm. this person fit to be in the rehab yes or is there a comorbidity uh -huh. of a disease yes that needs to be referred uh -huh. somewhere Remember? Exactly. and i think that is the issue that we had uh, raised uh, yeah. earlier about mm -hmm. when an addiction mm -hmm. has actually now become a mental illness a mental illness yeah so it's yes. very important on intake as yes. we do now the, the assessment mm -hmm. it's able to tell us whether this person we are going to keep it to keep him in the rehab yeah. or we are going to refer him in a mm -hmm. mental facility okay because i said earlier it's from addiction to a mental induced illness okay and you cannot keep this person in a rehab mm -hmm. 
and he needs now the the, 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 the help of a psychiatric. Okay, Maybe okay, he okay. needs to be in the psychiatric ward yes. for some time mm -hmm. before he's referred back to the rehab. It's an integration okay. program. D does does addiction or uh, substance use addiction mm -hmm. uh, always lead to a mental illness? To some extent, yes. Okay. Yeah, from the severity because I told okay. you the screening part. Okay. Either moderate or severe. Mm -hmm. At the point of severity, you'll find that there's a drug-induced psychosis. Mm. Okay. And a point, now, you have to deal with this person mm. at the right place. He's okay. a, he must be at the right place because keeping a mental patient in a rehab mm -hmm. will not help. Okay. Because even the counseling part, Yes. we want to talk with a person who is sober. He can't even talk. Yeah, he can't yeah. even uh, okay. coordinate the, the conversation. Mm -hmm. So yes. there is that initial... Uh, you say the first one is uh, a screening and screening assessment. And assessment. Yes. Uh -huh. Now from screening and assessment, you find this person is fit to be in the rehab. Mm. He now starts the program. Ours is a program of 90 days, the minimum. Mm. And But we can go to an extent of uh, even nine months Okay. for the hard drugs Okay. if the family is able to pay for uh, the... Meet the cost. To meet the cost. Okay, okay. But the minimum time is residential mm -hmm. program of three months. Okay. So in these three months, we deal uh, with individual counseling. Mm -hmm. The individual counseling is very important because we are addressing the underlying issues. Okay. Every person that abuses drugs will mm -hmm. tell you the cause yeah. as to why I started. In most cases, it may not be peer pressure or curiosity, mm -hmm. but the stressors of life. We okay. want to address okay. this thing that has been stressing me. How do I deal with it? Mm -hmm. How do I uh, go about with it? Okay. How do I overcome this thing? And that okay. is where the individual counseling comes in. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we do spiritual counseling. Okay. Because we understand yes. it's only a higher power. Yes. The transformation or the restoration yes. Yes. can only be done through God. Mm -hmm. So we do much of uh, spiritual counseling. Yes. And that has been our selling point because. Mm -hmm. Being a, a family-based setup, mm -hmm. we want to uphold the Christian values yes. and instill the, 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 the Christian mm -hmm. discipline in our clients. Okay. Yes. Now, now, let me ask this very important question. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, it's very important. Yes. A lot of people mm -hmm. cannot afford a treatment mm -hmm. or the rehabilitation fees that uh, are you know rehabilitation centers mm -hmm. because this is somebody somebody who is already run down yes economically they've already been run down mm -hmm. they can't even be able to keep themselves mm -hmm. and they would have to depend on family members who also have their own financial obligations and yes. responsibilities mm -hmm. and probably not willing to even spend a coin on we want to to nasiki, you know, anajifanyanga and all that. Mm -hmm. What can a person do mm -hmm. uh, to be able to overcome such a challenge mm -hmm. of substance use and addiction, mm -hmm. but they can't afford to be in a rehabilitation center? Well, uh, there are many things that a person can do. Yeah. And just like from Edward's story of yes. what I, I call the personal commitment. Yes. At times in life, even this person with inactive addiction mm. and has reached a point of uh, no return, you know, he has to surrender yes. to overcome this thing. Yes. Given that the family is not able. Mm. At times we take now the, the, the personal analysis. Mm. What are the advantages of this thing, the disadvantages? Mm -hmm. And if you, along the way, you'll find people talking to you. Yes. Even if they don't take you to a rehab, yes. people will be talking to us. Like now in the ministries mm -hmm. that we have in our churches, yeah. the, the seminars that are organized by our churches, yes. at one point you'll hear somebody talking about the effects of these things. Mm -hmm. Even if somebody does not take you to a rehab, yeah. there is this personal uh, mm -hmm. commitment. Yes, yes. The, the, the self-analysis that you yes. do on your own, yeah. and you decide now, Mm -hmm. This thing, I okay. have to come out of it. Okay. After counting now the losses, yes. after looking back and seeing now, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm this done with me. this thing. This is me. Okay. At a point of surrender and okay. you say you are able, uh, you, you, you are coming out of it. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. And mm -hmm. I think that is the hope that, uh, you know, in this Youth Week 2020, mm -hmm. we are talking about the power of the gospel to restore those who are broken hearted, to restore those who have been uh, broken in any area of your life. And today we are specifically looking at uh, brokenness that comes because of uh, substance use and addiction, mm -hmm. and especially among young people. You have listened to Edward's story. You have listened to the uh, professional input into these issues that God has provided for us His Word. He has given us His uh, Son, Jesus Christ, 
Thanks to Edward, as uh, much as we are also saying in this program today, that the gospel has been offered to us as our response to all these issues that trouble us, the issues that make our lives to be broken. And the church is doing so much. Uh, there are may very many parishes that are involved in doing a lot of rehabilitation work. Uh, through PCMF, through youth uh, uh, ministry, and uh, through other initiatives in our churches. And we encourage everybody who is out there with this kind of a challenge of uh, substance use and addiction, go to a church somewhere, go talk to someone, just like Edward did. It could be the beginning of your restoration to wholeness. And at the same time, we would wish to ask our churches everywhere, to do whatever is possible uh, to reach out to all these people uh, who are in our community suffering from substance use and addiction challenges because like Catherine told us mm -hmm. it is not a moral problem it is a disease it is a mental uh, what did you say it's a it's a chronic illness, it's a disease. Chronic illness mm -hmm. and somebody with a chronic illness definitely needs help and i want to take this opportunity to thank uh, edward very much for you know sharing his story with us and i trust that it has been a great inspiration to so many who are struggling with the same challenge that he was but we thank god that he overcame and we thank god for you too because you are gonna overcome or someone you love is gonna overcome. Uh, Catherine has told us that it can be a challenging process, it has relapses, but hope is there. Mm -hmm. And when God is there, all things are possible. And I also want to thank Catherine very much, mm -hmm. but I would not like to let you off before I ask you to say, what can um, uh, you say to a person who is not even, especially a young person who is not even uh, using any substance, mm -hmm. how can they keep themselves free completely, mm -hmm. completely free? Yes, thank you. I'll tell uh, any viewer that is watching us, mm -hmm. and you've not tested a, all or any of these dra drugs that you're talking about, mm -hmm. I'll just say, please don't even try. Okay. Because many have tested out of curiosity, mm -hmm. many have tested out of peer pressure, and yeah. nobody wakes up, up one morning and decides, I want to be an addict. Yeah. I want to be addicted to any substance. Yes. It's out of our behaviors and habits yes. that develop with time. Okay. So if you're there and you're not tested, mm. please don't. Okay. Don't even try. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you very much, Catherine, for finding time to be here with us today. Thank we you. give thanks to God for that and uh, mm. for the wonderful insights yes. uh, that you have shared with us. And uh, as we continue observing Health Week 2020 under the theme of Restores to Wholeness, it is our prayer that at the end of it, God will restore so many of us and uh, on uh, the journey in Youth Tuko, mm -hmm. this month we're actually going to run with this theme and we're going to be looking at different forms of restoration. Today we're talking about substance use and addiction. In the coming programs for this month, we're going to be looking at restoration from other challenges uh, that usually come along in young people's lives. Mm -hmm. God bless you very much and thank you to everybody who has made this uh, program to be a success today and most definitely thank you for watching CAC TV. Remain tuned and all the best as God restores you to wholeness, body, mind and spirit and all the things that matter in your life. Until next time, God bless you. Bye bye for now. <laughs>